Hello, Desert Bearhawk fans. All right, so here is the tank plumbing video that I promised earlier in the week. Um, it's taken me a while to kind of gather up things, and I've had a few other projects going, but we're, we're back on it, and we're getting with it. The uh, biggest problem I had was finding a way to cap off the filler neck. And you can see over here that I've got I've got this rubber cap on here now. And the reason I need to do that is because I'm going to pressurize the tank and uh, leak check it. And I needed a way to seal off the filler neck. And the, the fuel caps are vented, so I really didn't have a way to plug those vents. So I did some searching on Amazon, and I got these are 2-inch diameter rubber caps. Should be able to find them pretty easily if you're looking for them. So I've got that addressed, and then um, I've made all my lines, and I have them sticking straight out right now just because I wanted to put them on there and see what was what. And um, what i got to do is I've got, a, I've got a couple of things to do. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cap all these, so these will come off, and I'll put, uh, I'll put caps on them. I've got some caps in, like here, here's a bag of caps right there. I'll cap these off and then I'm going to pressurize the tank and do a leak check on it and then once it's installed the tank these lines here are going to um, they're going to extend towards the wing root and then uh, go to wherever they need to go to now this line and this line here these ones these smaller ones that are at an angle that's going to be my fuel indication system if you will um, these lines will get bent at a 90, kind of pointing down towards each other, and then in between the two there'll be a clear piece of plastic tubing, and that piece of plastic tubing will mirror the level that's in the tank, so with a glance I, I can just look at it. And I, I opted not to go with um, fuel level sensors or fuel level float sensors in the tank. I just didn't want to pierce the tank. It's another place for the tank to leak. And uh, this airplane, I want to try to keep this stuff as simple as I can. And there's nothing easier than looking at a sight glass and seeing your fuel level. So that's where we are with that. And of course, all of that's got to get mounted into the tank bay. And the real challenge is going to be piercing this rib right here, this one and the root rib, um, for the lines to pass through. I may get lucky and some of them will come through here, but I'm sure I'm going to have to make some holes or some doing some modify and filing and whatnot to get it in there. And then finally, on the tank itself, oh, there's Orson. Hey, Orson. Hey. Say hi. All right. And finally, on the tank here, we have one last thing. And that's underneath the tank. You can see here, if I get out of the washout, there's the uh, fuel sampling sump valve. So when you go to go flying for the day, you can take a fuel sample through there. It's uh, one of those deals. And uh, that has got to pierce the skin on the tank cover. So I got to measure and locate a hole for this on my you know on the tank bay cover and uh, you know, drill that hole out and hope I get it in the right spot so that's what's going on but anyways let's talk about what we got going on here um, each one of these fittings pull this off have been installed and torqued down and uh, if you look here, you can see there's the bung that was welded into the tank. Then there's this brass looking deal. And then the AN to pipe union right here. This right here is one of these. And all it is is a mesh strainer that goes inside the tank to keep any kind of garbage that might get pumped in there from the fuel truck from getting into my fuel system and contaminating it. 
So that threads into the bung and then the fitting threads into it. Now I've done the lower the, uh, the pressure relief or the, uh, the sump drain. I've done that on the far side of the tank. I've done the plug and I've put in these three fittings and I've got this strainer in. Now I'm going to fit this fourth uh, union end to the other position, but I haven't done that yet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this video in a couple, three or four, I'll probably do, well, not three, yeah, maybe three, two, two at least, maybe three, because I don't want to go through the editing process, so I'm just going to do a couple, three or two, two or three, six, seven minute videos that should cover this whole install. But anyways, I'm using this on my threads. Loctite 567, and I can hear I can hear the groaning now. I'm sure some of you out there are gonna leave a comment that says, you know, nothing on your threads and fittings, you don't do it, and that's solid. That's solid advice, and I agree that you, that you can install them with nothing on there. But after talking to a very well, an exceedingly knowledgeable friend of mine who's an AI, he's a home builder himself, and I, I consider him one of the smartest guys I've ever met. He used a Loctite 567 on all of his um, pipe connections. Now, I won't be using it on the AN side, only on the pipe side. And he uses this, says it's the stuff to use. I don't want any leaks, so I'm using it. So that's where we are. Um, I will shoot another video once the tank is installed and we start to to get uh, the, the, well, actually the next video will be the, of me pressurizing the tank. I'll show you how I do that and how we leak check it. And then the final video will be the install of it into the wing itself. So there you are at seven minutes, 30 coming up. We're going to call that good. It was a little long, but this is basically it. If you have any questions about what I'm doing here, leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer. Um, and, uh, we'll see you in the shop.